Have you completed your mission? Oh yeah, we wasted them. Check out the head on this sucker. Fine. However, an earlier expedition remains incomplete. The G-sweep of the planet Earth indicates residual cry life. G-sweep's wrong. No way, Your Holiness. I was there. I saw it all. The G-sweep is infallible. The Council is very nervous when it comes to the Krites. They are a lethal plague and must be wiped out. Pay for the hexapod kill shall be withheld until the eradication of crimes on Earth is verified. There must be no doubt. This mean we're going back to Earth? Welcome everyone to Two Guys and Some Horror. Today, we're talking about boobs, balls, and monsters all at the same time. Joe Bob Briggs, don't sue me for, your stick, for stealing your stick. And as always, joined with me today is my dear friend and hero, Curtis. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. I'm glad uh, to be back with you talking about movies that we love. It's been a while, huh? It's been it's like two weeks since almost. we recorded. Yeah. Man behind the curtain for the folks there. Uh, we, you know, I'm glad we're, we're back to watching horror movies. I'm glad we're back to recording. I'm, re I'm relaxed. I'm refreshed. Had a nice vacation. Mmm, just good. And Curtis and I, we watched, uh, folks, we watched Cur Critters 2, you know, in reference to the balls and the breasts, because uh, this is definitely a film that feels like it was made for teenagers who were, who were going through puberty. And I mean that in a good way, like in a good way. I know whenever I say stuff like that, it sounds kind of like a little bit negative, and it's, I don't know, I, I just want to say like... When I say things like this, it's super positive. It's like, this is the kind of the, uh, the energy that this gives off. It gives off like an adolescent. You have the childishness from the first one that was kind of like, you know, you have a preteen going through puberty. And now you have a teenager kind of returning to the, in this film. The same uh, main character, the redheaded kid, uh, returns. And he's coming of age. He's becoming a man. He's no longer the boy who cried wolf. He's now the hero who saves the town, uh, in a sense, as well as his town alcohol friend who is now a bounty hunter who also makes a return and uh, i think for returning actors it's just those two as well as the actor who played ug in the first film so three returning actors uh, i don't know if they were able to get the rights for everyone else but this film had uh, i don't know if it had a bigger budget but uh this film definitely had a lot more critters as you kind of see, like on the cover of the of the screen or of the VHS cover, it's uh, just a big critter ball, uh, which happens at some point in the film. But kind of going into this this film, the budget was about 4.5 million. It opened on May 1st, 1988. They did not get their money back. It opened about like 1.9 million dollars, uh, with a worldwide gross of about 3.8. So, Ouch. Yes. Uh, Critters 3 came out like uh, a while later, which I think was lower quality and wasn't as good. I haven't seen it. Uh, this is the last Critters movie I've ever seen. Uh, but, but yeah, Curtis, uh, let's get your thoughts on it. I, I kind of want to hear your feelings because I know usually you're, you're, the, you're the bubbly, super happy, optimistic guy with the good things to say about films. So let's get your take. Fuck this movie. It's garbage. Don't watch. I'm just kidding. Totally kidding. I actually, yeah, I do. I, I love this movie. I think it's a lot of fun. I think the uh, boy who cried wolf aspect is something that's, you know, definitely used a lot throughout the 80s, especially when it comes to horror movies involving kids or teenagers. And uh, I don't There's know, man, just like the minute, <laughs> yeah, the minute that <clears throat> I heard the initial sounds for the New Line Cinema splash screen coming. Like so many memories as a kid just kind of poured over me. And as soon as I heard the music and saw the logo, I was like, okay, you know, this is a happy place for me. I'm, I'm cool. I like this. Um, I don't know if, if you have the same kind of feeling when it comes to like movie intros, especially if you see like a, a splash screen or the that opening. But there's just something nostalgic about it that really – kind of makes you smile and think about some of the movies that you loved when you were younger. Because when I hear that, I always think of Mortal Kombat, like right off the bat. That's just the first movie that comes to mind. I rented that movie way too many times on VHS from Blockbuster because I just really love that movie. But when I saw that, I was ready to go. 
Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's a fun movie. It's not a good movie. Um, you know, don't, if you go into this and you're expecting it to be like, you know, the best 80, uh, best horror movie from the eighties or even close to that, get out of town. Don't even, don't even try that. And, uh, you know, just strap yourself in, know what you're getting in for. It's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. There's going to be plot holes, which we'll discuss. Uh, but at the same time, like just suspend your disbelief, get rid of that and, and have a good time. Stop crying about stuff and have fun. Well, I, think, I think if you watch Critters, a new binge or any of the, uh, other Critters movies, you should know what you're in for. This is not to be taken seriously. This is just, you could tell the creators just kind of created this to have fun. Uh, this movie doesn't make sense in some ways, which don't try to make sense of it. It's, I mean, you see a giant critter ball roll over a guy, and he, it just leaves a bloody skeleton. This film's a, and they, it's kind of a joke. They're they're kind of trying to still go off the success of uh, like the small monster, little monsters movies that kind of came out in the '80s and '90s, like Gremlins. You have the Munchies. You have uh, oh, the Munchies, great movie. Uh, like Ghoulies, uh, the original Troll film, and Troll Two. If you really want to talk about that. And I think my the the main thing that I, I started I saw this film when I was like 13 years old. I was going through puberty, and I thought it was great. I loved this movie back then. I was like, oh, look at this cool critter ball kind of going around town. And I rewatched this movie like nine times when we rented it. And the one thing I really liked, and uh, forgive me for for being male, was like this is the first time I got a saw boobs when I was a kid. I was like, whoa, what are those? And you know, I, I reached adulthood. Uh, that day when I realized I liked girls. So Critters 2 made me a man. Curtis. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> I mean, it's a, great, it's a great set of boobs. I can't say that I watched this when I was 13. That's the best part is this is literally my first time ever seeing this film. Um, and, I mean, I can agree with you. It's, it's a great set of boobs. And, <laughs> well, whether or not they're great or not, just like, you know, you're going through, you're going through puberty, you're, you're a young boy, and you, you see something, and you're like, oh, I, I like this. I, this, is, this is what I want. And I, I feel like this movie was, these, the set of movies were made for, like, that age group from, like, 10 to 14, where you're kind of figuring out who you are in, the, in your life. And it's rated, you personality, it's rated PG-13. Yeah, yeah. So, no, I mean, before, it's definitely geared towards that. <laughs> this is before the rated R rating was uh, really kind of set on, I think. I think that was, didn't happen until, like, 1990. But don't quote me on that. Uh, this film, like, starts out, like, we're in this town. They, this drunk teen, teenage boy who... Oh, hell no. You're not skipping <laughs> the real intro, are you? Oh, the real intro when they're in space? Yes. Oh, man, do you want to talk about this real, one? Yeah, I'll just be... real quick, real quick. Mm-mm. Okay, so the open the opening is the bounty hunters exterminating a creature on another planet, right? We get to see Charlie again. Right. Charlie's hanging out with the bounty hunters. He's officially now become a part of that team. He feels like he's finally accepted. He hasn't had any booze, so he's no longer the drunk idiot in, in the village. And he's hanging out with Ugg and Lee. Um, the reason why I really want to talk about this scene is because after they – yeah, after they get rid of that creature, Charlie goes to put it in the freeze bay. And when you look in the freeze bay, there's like a ton of different creatures, heads, just creature, little creature bodies, whatever. And there's like most importantly, there is a Mangalorian head from the film The Fifth Element. And the reason why this is so weird to me is because The Fifth Element, this movie, so Critters 2 came out in 1988. Fifth Element didn't come out until 1997. Right. How how that is even almost ten years? Yeah, how that's even possible, or what? I don't know who's involved there. I don't know the link, but somehow so, the Mangalorian head shows up here. It's crazy. I think I just think it was it's the same studio, and they're like, we already have this. Let's just reuse it. I, I don't think there's any any. There might be a tie-in for whoever designed it, but honestly, uh, what studio did? the fifth element versus what studio did critters to. And like, this is a theory I have. I'm just pulling this out of my ass, but that might make sense. But yeah, it is an interesting kind of thing to, to look into. Uh, let us know if you, if you find out for us, we'd, we'd love to love to know. So it's, it's Columbia pictures did fifth element and mm. critters two was new line cinema. 
Yeah, New Line Cinema. Right. So different different studios, but maybe they share a writer somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, if somebody out there knows or has any idea why that's even possible, uh, please you know drop a comment, shoot us an email, hit us up on Twitter, or Instagram, you know, all the things. But anyways, I just wanted to point it out because I, I really love that, and I think it's it's. Um, I don't know. I think it's like one of the most interesting pieces when it comes to this movie. So let's carry I'm glad on. You saw though. that too. Yeah, let's carry on. I need to uh, kind of talk about something too. Um, I'm glad Charlie is not an alcoholic anymore. I'm glad he has somewhat of an arc. Uh, Charlie is the, but he kind of feels like the gopher on the team to me, Curtis, because he's like, he's got that kind of comedic act where I think they're just like, yeah, we like this guy. He's a shitty bounty hunter, but he's with us. Totally. I mean, you watch throughout the whole film, like you said, he has a really good arc. Even it's not over yet, right? When this movie starts and you see him being a part of the team, he really is. He's like, let's put it this way. If, if the bounty hunters in space are the best team, he's like the worst player on the best team. But then if you take Charlie and you put him on a worse team than the bounty hunters, he may be the best player on that worst team. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, because you you I, see it through this movie, you see it happen. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think Charlie's definitely kind of someone who just he he's aimless. He doesn't know what what's going on, and this is where he kind of figures it out. The first film, Charlie doesn't do much aside from like shoot a slingshot. This one, he shoots ship guns. Uh, Wait, is the first one where he shoots the sister in the butt with the slingshot? Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, he oh, misses man. the can and hits the sister in the butt. Uh, but he 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 redeems himself at the end with a nice ass shot from that slingshot. And in this one, we see a well, the redhead like picks up the slingshot from like the box, and he just kind of like you see, we see a nod to the first film right there when he's playing with the stuff in that box. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, let's go to Earth here where yes. the eggs are found. The Krite eggs. And they get that message from the alien. He's like, your work's not done. So we're, we're, on, we're on Earth. There's this kind of a fence. Is that what we, we call the guy, the old man? He's like a fence because he's selling just odds and ends and picking them up. And this kid, like, hey, look at these eggs I found. Give me some money. And he's like, they're not worth anything. He's like, give me some beer. And he's like, all right, I'll give you some beer. Yeah, Quigley's a fence for sure. Because any any commodity, any goods you have, he'll he'll buy it from you, sell it for for more. Um, and Wesley, the the kid who finds the eggs, is like the typical punk, uh, who you know, cool kid. He's got the leather jacket. He smokes cigarettes. He wants a case of Monster Brew. All that yeah, stuff. I think it's he's great. the lovable idiot. <laughs> yeah, he's I mean. your lovable idiot. <laughs> he he has no. There's no point to him being in the film aside from having him find the eggs and and say like, oh, I love the old guy too. And he's like, when when his dog shows up, he has this pit bull and he's like, and he's like, what are you what are you afraid of? It's just a dog. And Wesley's like, so is Cujo. Oh so. my God, thank you. I have that line written down too. It's it's one of my favorite lines in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he makes the dog get in the back. The kid gets his porno mags because he he's. He's like, I'm taking the porno mags too. And the guy's like, God damn teenagers. So he takes like a box of porno mags. He takes like some beer, a couple cases of like beers. Cause he didn't have the beer he wanted. And he drives off with half the egg or with, or he drives off leaving the eggs there, mm-hmm. uh, which half the eggs get taken by the main character the redhead. I uh, don't remember his name because Brad. I don't remember names, Brad. Uh, yes, Brad. So Scott Grimes, who plays Brad, um, picks up, or his grandma picks up the eggs for like twenty dollars, and she's like guilt tripping this guy. She's like, "You you would do that to the church? I'll give you twenty dollars." And he's like, "For for half." So she buys half the eggs, thinking they're Easter eggs from Europe, which already I'm like, "Hmm, all right." So, and these eggs have been dormant for how many years, Curtis? It's been Two. four years. Two years. Two, yeah, so there's a couple there's, – there's some difference of opinion uh, uh, from the characters in the film. We get uh, – Megan says to Brad in the car or in the truck or whatever, it's been a few years since you've been here. And then uh, somebody else says two years specifically. So you got to figure two to four maybe. 
Right. And Wesley is, he's grown. He's definitely hit a growth spurt. He's not that same 10 or 12 year old kid he was. So I was, that's why I was confused. I was like, neither is Megan. Like ha 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 I... Megan. <laughs> so Megan, the story, right. Or how, how right. Brad knows her is that she was this, uh, braces wearing zit faced pigtail young girl back in high school right. or whatever. She's blossomed into a beautiful young woman. And oh. Oh, and yeah. if Brad wasn't attracted to her, I'd punch him in the face. Well, <laughs> if he wasn't attracted to her, I'd punch him in the face. Well, you know, they do cast attractive people on purpose in movies. I candy. We like to look at pretty things. Uh, but we get these eggs. They get taken. They get painted. Uh, this girl, the, the girl who's with the, uh, the lady who's the younger sister of the romantic interest of Brad, uh, I think Megan, she, her sister, like, falls asleep, a critter hatches from the egg, and, like, this point is probably the scariest, this is probably where you're going to get the horror in this film, uh, you, but, you know, rules of horror, uh, children almost never die unless it's a gritty film. But in kind of humorous films like this, you, you just can't really expect it. There are some exceptions, like in Piranha, like kids get eaten by the piranhas, and that, I don't know, but that those are just piranhas, they're killing everything. Uh, but otherwise, man, you never, never see kids die. So That's true. The, the critter's true. rolling around underneath her, baby critter, sees her hand, and it's like walking towards her. She pulls her hand up, the critter's like, oh, well, where's my meat? puts her her foot falls down and you're like oh no her foot's not gonna lift it get lifted up dad walks in the room steps on the critter and he's like oh no shouldn't put your candy on the floor sweetie yeah now your easter candy's ruined (laughs) yeah yeah two two interesting facts about that like so so one uh, just around the critter's eggs hatching right so one is in the barn at quigley's barn it's just a well-placed space heater right right they they even they force you to understand that because they show it uh, and it's very force. And then the second one was with the kid. You know, the dad asks, hey, uh, you want to get under the covers? And she just replies, no, it's too hot. So it just implies. And it's like, these man, these writers really wanted to give you the answers as much as they could, yet they can't explain certain issues that we have later on in the film, right? It's just, it's mind baffling that <laughs> A, they they have to force feed you answers, but at the same time, they're not willing to give you all of the answers. It's just it's mind baffling. Well, really, it's the answer to that question is it's critter eggs hatch after a set amount of time from you know, it takes at least two years for them to gestate and just open up. <laughs> and it's they have a very slow uh slow fetal process and these eggs just it was time, man. It was just time for the eggs to hatch. I'm it definitely. They definitely didn't have hot days in the underneath that that barn or house no, where they no. found the eggs. No, no never, impossible. never. Uh-uh. <laughs> Again, don't try to make sense of this film. Uh, the The props they used for the eggs, by the way, they were super app sugar apples. Oh, oh, interesting. Yeah. I like that. No, but anyhow, these uh. The critters are hatching. Uh, they hatch in the old man's place first, the fence. And he, he's dead pretty much instantly. Uh, they just, they hatch their little babies and they, they, they kill him. And I think this is where the aliens show up, right? They show up in the barn and they just kill them all. Or was that in the, and that may have been the fast food joint, the hungry heifer. No, they that show up at Nana's effort. house first. Oh, that's right. That because oh, this is wait, your no. number one most unexplained moment in the film. <laughs> I thought, he, yeah. Well, I thought that. Well, they do show up at the hungry heifer at some point, but yeah, yeah. you're right. You're right. You're after right. after they, Nana's house, yeah. I watched this last night, uh, and the order of events are always jumbled in my ADHD no, brain. No, no, no. Let me help you out. Uh, it's fine. So Brad, <laughs> Brad, and it's... Megan. Uh, run across the the Lin Shay Sal the the reporter chick and she's like Lin I saw this the love I, of my life <laughs> let's give you that moment here you go so tell us more about Lin Shay uh, I just think she's a great actress and I respect her 
Perfect. And I think she, I, w- I would like to hang out with her, drink some tea, and ask her about her life. She's and had she a probably tell huge me about her life. career, man. A huge Massive career. Massive career, very busy, still very active. She, I, she was born in 1943, I think, off the top of my head. And she's been acting for years and years and years. Hasn't gone anywhere without work. She was that creepy lady in, uh, what was it? It's not The Conjuring. It's uh, Insidious. Insidious, yes. The, yeah. the old creepy old lady movie. She's in, she's in a few horror movies. She's great. Lynchay, you did a good job. Proud of you. Keep we up. love you here on the show. If you ever want to come be a guest, let us know. We'll do a movie with you starring in it. Um, well, she's trying to keep a scoop, too, on this on this character. Her her side story doesn't really matter. She's just kind of in the film. But at first, like I think she's just an annoying lady. But you know, down the line, I'm like, hey, I like her. So. Definitely. So Brad and Megan pick her up, and they go to Quigley's barn. Quigley comes stumbling out dead from the Krites. The Krites then attack them. The Krites shoot their pin needles at the truck, right? Remember? They, and it gets stuck in the truck door, and the kids are all freaking out. Um, and this is one of the things I think we want to put a pin on. Ooh, that's funny. Um, <laughs> uh, porcupine uh, prick. Uh, but we want to put a pin on it later because there's some unexplainable things that, remember, we're not going to overthink it, but we just want to point it out for plot hole pro- problems. Well, yeah, so, well, the, you're right. The critters, so we're at the church, I think, where the critters, where people are aware that the critters exist mm-hmm. because they they hatch, like they hide these Easter eggs. They're all painted up. Great painting job, by the way, uh, Nana. And this Easter bunny who looks drunk is hopping around, and he, I think he was like about to pee because he unzips his fly, and he's like, damn, kids, I hate being the Easter bunny. I'm a bad character. I'm going to die right here. And you see like three dust balls flying in his crotch. And then he's just like, blah, 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 blah. it's like flailing around and like the critters jump out and you just see his dead body on the ground and everybody's screaming. Critters are chasing this girl on a tricycle, which these things are able to shoot spikes through car doors, but they're not able to catch up to this small girl on a tricycle because our character, our hero, the boy who cried wolf, Mr. Brad, Scott Grimes, comes up with a baseball bat and just, like, whacks them and kicks them, and that does the trick. So the, <laughs> this this is a lot of uh, scenes that you're bringing together, and I'm really – I'm digging what you got going on here. This is great. I'm you right now, these things make no sense. Like, they are so yeah. – nothing they do makes sense because they have the – when they shoot people in the neck, like, the spike kind of – like pierces but not very far but when they shoot in the doors it just goes halfway through car doors and then i don't know not that's able to the catch point small that's the point i was able. trying to get to <laughs> <laughs> no I, there, there are a bunch of like little things and events and like this whole process of the mayhem you know you go to the hungry heifer and the critters are in there eating hamburgers and i don't know man like one of the guy Lee transforms into this Playboy model, and her boobs pop out, and she's like, "Kill Kreitz," which is a, the line that my favorite line in the film. And they, when they get to the hunger- What's crazy about that too is is Lee likes to change a lot, right? And they yes. explain it in the beginning how he's looking for the you know the right body. He can't live in the wrong body, all that stuff. But he wants to change into Charlie when they land and Charlie finds the playboy that happened to fall off of Wesley's Jeep as he was driving by. There's your connection there. And as he opens it up to the centerfold, you know, Lee, he, he basically shows Lee that instead of Lee transforming into Charlie, he transforms into the centerfold, which is to me just bonkers. I love it. It's a great idea. But then later on, he, he tries to turn into nightmare on Elm street. He turn wants, Freddy Krueger. He wants to turn into Freddy Krueger. <laughs> and it's just... No, no, no. He pulls up the Playboy open. Yeah, He's like, this, yeah. this. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah. I'm like, no, fuck, man. I want Freddy Krueger on my yes. side. What and are they, you doing? And they have the rights because it's a new line cinema film. They could yeah. have done it. Instead... They, just getting Mr. John England to come in and do it. Yeah. Probably be a lot of money, so that they're like, "Yeah, oh, this is funny." But we'll it just sucks because there. shortly after that, Lee gets killed. She gets ambushed and killed. If she had been Freddy, she wouldn't have died. Lee wouldn't have died. And, no, I agree. Uh, it's it's very unfortunate. Charlie got Lee killed. That son of a bitch. 
Well, Lee Lee is a very one dimensional character. To be frank, Lee just says kill Kreitz, kill, kill more Kreitz. Kreitz. Lee just wants yeah. to kill Kreitz. Ugh is the one who makes sense, who talks, who gives us uh, what is the word. He kind of explains things. He's the one who gives us the storyline. And when before this, when they're at the Hungry Heifer, m- one of my favorite actors, uh, and I don't know why, is Eddie Deason. He did the voice for Mandark in Dexter's Laboratory. He was in a lot of... He's been... He's, he's like the typical nerd character. Every time he's in a film, anytime he's in anything, anytime he does a voice, it's almost always a nerd. And that's because of his voice. He sounds like this. Yeah. He's also in Greece. Eddie Deason. In Greece too. Yeah. Oh, he's in both. Yeah. He's the he's the he's main nerd in, in Greece. That's why I recognized his his voice instantly. <laughs> yeah, so he's the manager at the Hungry Heifer, which gets attacked by critters. Our bounty hunters come in. Uh, our Playboy model, model looks at him, and she's like, yeah, I'm going to turn into this guy. Takes his glasses, puts them on. Kill more Christ! Walks away. Best role he's ever played was a bounty hunter, Eddie Deason. Cross-dressing bounty hunter which i think it's even better it, it's so much more comical and it, it just oh god that scene is so funny is it cross-dressing though because that that outfit was originally for a man and then it just turned into like her boobs just pierced right through it because you but, know, that's what and then it's do. a thong <laughs> it's a g it's a g-string it's a g-string oh man you're yeah. right i mean that's you funny. only see the front of it when d's when eddie deason's in it but at the end of the day you should i mean i assume that it's still the shape of a woman's outfit. Uh, that the whole he, time it was the shape yeah. of a woman's outfit. Yeah, they, this is know. how they dress, man. They they want to feel comfortable. They want to feel sexy. Honestly, it's very breezy. Should... <laughs> no, no, there's no judgment. I'm <laughs> I'm commending. I like the <laughs> fact that he's still wearing it. <laughs> Thank you, Eddie Deason. I'll see you later. Um... <laughs> I, I'm, I'm I'm a little sad that Eddie Deason wasn't like more present in this film like killing Kreitz, but good job funny moment yeah he didn't get to live out long enough you know live live in that body long enough that that was true lee's death was kind of unceremonious she kind of walked down she's like kill Kreitz, and then we see the Kreitz just jump her and she's gone like this badass bounty hunter who's been on hundreds or maybe thousands of missions uh, to kill these aliens from different areas. They've captured Kreitz before. They've killed a lot of Kreitz. And she goes in alone and just dies. Which... It is it is kind of weird. I wonder if, uh, you know, the actress who played her, if her contract hours, billable hours were up, or I don't know, because it does feel very unceremonious and very rushed. Um, what? may not have been a very good actor too because they didn't really have too many lines yeah. for this character as well i think she was a playboy model but don't quote me on that i haven't looked into her so the fact i um, read about yeah. it was that the so the playboy magazine that they used for her uh the centerfold is actually a different female than the female that was cast oh. uh but i didn't see any confirmation of whether she was a playboy model or not but this film mm-hmm. is one of the only films that is listed under playboy entertainment uh company or something like that which is really interesting because um, if it says that, then my assumption would she be had that to have been, right? that's well, that's the, that would be the permission to get the magazines in there probably too, though. Like, yeah, oh, maybe true. that was there. Maybe she was in Playboy. I don't know. I don't really care. I'm not going to. Eh, I don't know, man. Like, this is one of those things that I'm like, it could be. But if I look it up. I'm just going to be like, uh, if you find out it is that it's true that she was in it, it's not going to enhance the feeling. And if you find out that she wasn't, it's not going to hurt the feeling. It's just like, yeah, eh, maybe she was. Yeah. It's something that's kind of there. Hey guys, who are, if those of you listening, if you find out, let us know. We, we, we'd like to figure it out, but looking into it's kind of not, not a prerogative right now. Anyhow, I thought the hungry heifer was probably my favorite scene where they come in and they just like blast all the cries and they're, the Kreitz apparently know what guns are, even though they were born, like, earlier that day. They see it, and they run away. Um, Kreitz show up in Nana's earlier, like we said. They, he presses a button on a remote control. Boom. They all just appear. The, the bounty hunters, like, appear as soon as he presses the button. Like, they're there. Nana, like, the, cr- the critters are here again. No shit. <laughs> It's like attacking, you know, it's no trying to get shit, through the door. Brad. It's, like, it's so good. 
Yeah, I love I love Nana. I uh, Nana has I really, my heart. I really loved the way the Reverend kind of foreshadowed a few things for us in the movie. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you caught it. Um, but two things specifically I noticed that he kind of foreshadowed. So it's interesting that they, you know, decided to put the film taking place over the Easter holiday because the Reverend talks about references to the resurrection um, and that it was 45 minutes away or whatever, right? But it's, it's right. more interesting because the critters are being resurrected in this film as well. We all thought they were gone, but no, they were rising again. They're being resurrected. So the Reverend kind of drops a little yeah. foreshadowing there. The yeah, other... no, like this, yeah. This this church, this small town church kind of feeling, I don't think really existed in the '80s, like like it kind of does in this movie, because it really felt like the mid 1800s in a hot church. Everybody's kind of fanning themselves with their programs. Could be wrong. I don't. I don't know. I haven't been in very many small town churches. But... So the cool thing about this is uh, at the very end of the movie, and I'll get back to my other foreshadowing. But at the end yeah. of the movie, they thank the the small town. Um, that was actually shot in of Grover Bend. Um, mm. That's what it's called. Yeah, Grover's Bend. And so, honestly, this this could be the most realistic uh, feeling church. But I don't know. I've seen Footloose where they're doing the same thing and they're kind of fanning themselves because it's so hot in that church. And that took place, I think, late 80, 80s as well. Um, I don't know. There's a couple. We get a lot of movies that have that. You know, they they kind of make you feel like that was a normal thing, but honestly, I wouldn't I wouldn't know. Unfortunately, um, I'd have to call yeah. my mom. Um, but the other foreshadowing moment was when he's when the reverend's up there preaching, and he talks about the the quote is they saw sitting on the right side a young man clothed in a long white garment, and they were frightened. They saw sitting on the right side a young man clothed in a long white garment and they were affrighted and then the sheriff in the white bunny costume comes crashing through the window on the reverend's right and everybody in the in the uh church becomes frightened like i just thought that was kind of funny i don't know if it was on purpose coincidental i think so but it's a man clothed in a white garment and he and I, everyone I, is affrighted definitely on purpose <laughs> <laughs> definitely on purpose i let's let's talk about the sheriff then because this sure is the guy in the Easter Bunny suit that who hates kids is the current sheriff. He's dead. The old sheriff was voted out, lives in a trailer, and just drinks now because they voted him out after he found the critters and nobody believed him and they think he's crazy or, or whatever. Anyhow, his story is the story of redemption as well. He's a, a proper main character. But what did you think, man, Like about this guy? Because they kind of make him the mentor to uh brad in this film for some reason especially at the end where he's like kiss the girl let's go yeah that um it, that is interesting because he plays such a small role once again in this yeah. movie um he has only you know a few lines and whatever i i just thought that they did a good job of bringing back another character from the previous film and tying in his storyline i love how he's like the savior at one moment you know when so when brad's beating off the critters with the baseball bat as the little girl's riding the bicycle um that's who saves them actually is the is you know that sheriff he comes out with both guns ablazing and he's just pow 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 pow, pow like a cowboy he kills like eight of them when yep. she's on that bike riding away by the way that hurt she's wearing a yellow dress uh -huh. And she's riding the bike like the little girl in Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Shit, so. you stole my, my line. I was going to bring that up yeah. too. Uh, it's from a Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors is what I think they're trying to do an homage to. And since it's a I, new line cinema film, I guess so. But I don't really remember it too much. I don't know if that if that's the case or not. Be, but the way she's riding the bike looks kind of similar. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know, man. I mean, it's a blonde I, I girl riding a tricycle in the same color dress. I guess it could be... Yeah, it could be, but no confirmation anywhere that I could find. So, um, well, but, and you know, New Line Cinema, kind of going back to to Lynn Shea. Uh -huh. I know we're we're doing a segue here. They always cast her in the films. Do you know why? Because she's amazing. She is the oh, younger no. sister yeah. of the founder, Robert Shea. Shit, that's right. I did read that. And I completely <laughs> forgot. <man>. Damn it! <laughs> nice job, Clark. Hey, Nepotism. for anyone keeping score at home. Clark's got one. Curtis has none. Damn it. No, it's just, it's a nepotistic thing. And they, they, yeah, like you said, Robert Shea is the executive producer of this film. And he's also the co-founder of New Line Cinema. 
So he always casts his little sister in his films, and she's a great actor. Luckily, I don't blame she him there. is awesome. Yeah. She, she does great. It'd be but one thing if, if, they, if she sucked, but luckily, she's good. <laughs> I don't know if, if her character really needed to be in this film, aside from just her saying, oh, that kid's coming back, the kid who cried wolf. Anyone could have done that. Sure. But I digress, my friend. Sure. So, so <laughs> sure. I, don't have, I don't have any specific notes about anything else in the rest of the film because the end of the film is so, um, I wouldn't say it's boring, but it's just pretty straightforward. There isn't any twists. There isn't any, or I guess there's one good twist. Maybe we should well, talk about that. Well, let's talk about the, uh, the conflict because Lee dies. Ugg Ug is completely heartbroken, uh, distraught, yeah, yeah, depressed. Maybe I don't know. Distraught's, yeah. a, distraught's a great word because he screams and turns back to his base form. And so he won't Captain transform. No Face, he won't transform. That's right. He won't. Tra Ugg won't transform. So everybody goes to the church. They're all congregated there. They're all worried. The critters are eating all of the livestock, and they they set up a plan to trap all the critters in this burger factory. And during the process in the church, you have that old guy going like, "Y'all are around from here. Ain't it funny that this kid just comes back and the critters are here too?" He's just trying to like point the finger and make everybody upset at this this kid. And he's like, "I don't trust you or this spaceman here," pointing to Ugg and or the town like, drunk. And he points to Charles or, or Charlie. The, yeah, town drunk. And the, the sheriff shoots the gun in the air in the church, and it's just like, okay. Which is also All something right. you probably should never do. Probably not. <laughs> not shoot it in the ceiling too, because anyhow, besides ricochet, besides debris falling down uh shooting a firearm in an open room without trying to protect yourself is never a good idea any they, they 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 go with the plan with this minor conflict they they our buddy the blonde kind of dopey lovable dork uh wesley decides to go with our hero charlie or our brad as well as uh megan so we have our trio, Day Terror. There might have been another one, but I, maybe the sheriff went too. I, I don't remember. So I think the sheriff uh, took a bunch of people to the hardware store to get like dynamite and fuel and fire, right, right. like stuff for the fire and all that. But yeah, they, those three men go to the <laughs> to the plant. This is so stupid too, because the burgers are all already made. They're already in buns. Like they they make hamburgers for the critters. They look frozen, like, right? Yeah, but well, that's polar burger. It's what? It doesn't I don't, make I don't sense. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Like it's everything's already there, and like the burgers are prepared for the critters, and there's dynamite inside, like some of the things, and they sprinkle like some some frit Fritos or whatever on top of the dynamite. Just making a really nice meal for these guys. Your description is so good. It's hamburger <laughs> meat. They shove a dynamite in the middle, and then they throw cheese. Like it looks like grated cheese on top. Why is it Fritos? I thought it were Fritos. It was like those little things you put on top of salad. I didn't know it was cheese. <laughs> uh, when I was watching it, that's what it looked like to me because it was very stale. It's it was true. No I mean, like cheese. it does look weird. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, like they. They they set up this plan. The critters are like rolling. And they're like it's working, and then they turn around. And they're like, "There's life. There's fresh meat this way." So, and then the big critter who just appears is like, "Blah blah 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 blah." And he's like, "Hamburgers, no bones." So the critters turn around, go to the burger factory. They all get trapped inside. Turns out the big critter was Ugg the whole time. He did transform. Ugg gets bit as soon as he transforms. Uh, they close the door, kill that critter, and then it blows up. And everybody's like, music plays. Everyone's like, it's finally over. And then we get the giant critter ball. We get the thing we've been waiting for this entire film. <laughs> finally! The last 10 minutes of the movie, <laughs> we get the critter ball. And uh, this side... Uh, this is the part that, that is unexplainable. There, there's no reason why this critter ball should be that big. There were not that many critters. Most of them, like half of them died. There weren't that many eggs. But, you know, 
delay your, your thinking. Just it's a movie. Giant critter ball the size of uh, about the height, uh, like the height of a of an SUV. Well, okay, think about it this way: the giant factory door, right? The shipping container door that you would wheel open and a diesel truck would back up to. Okay, there's dynamite in there too, and nothing, nothing re- happened. Yeah, no. But but that ball is that size. It's about as wide as the door and as tall as the the you know floor to the door. I mean that thing is massive. There's just I, is it is it hollow in the middle? You know, are there no no crites in the middle of that ball? Like the the size of it is just it's it doesn't make a lot of sense. Like you're saying, there were hundreds of those critters, sure, but well the the ball looks great. Like if you look at the pictures of it, it looks great. But in the film, you can't really tell that there are critters there. Nah, it just you looks just like a giant ball. Yeah. Until it closes in on, like, does a close up, and you see their mouths moving. I have to say, I mean, the rolling critter balls throughout this entire film. I thought that that was just really cool. I I kept thinking, like, how how would I do that? Like, if I shot a movie, how the hell would I make a ball uh, roll and then you know then be able to actually pop it out into a puppet and and act with it? And they did. I mean, they did some really amazing uh you know work with it but this giant four and a half million dollars in the 1980s i'm just struggling with the giant one still because i just i feel like it's really not i don't know i don't think it's practical i don't think it was no um, it didn't make it didn't make any sense but it it was fun it was fun it's it's what i lay in bed and think about at night you know how how'd they do that giant critter ball Mm. (laughs) well they they did it critter ball rolls over a couple people turns them into bloody skeletons six people are dead throughout the entirety of this film we have our body count of six i know curtis you were probably going to say that later but nope i was going to leave it alone (laughs) (laughs) Uh, then you know critter ball gets shot by the spaceship and the spaceship crashes person in the spaceship is charlie who ran away like a little bitch uh, he did not run away himself he did not run away he was running to get the spaceship I think he was running away like a little spaceship and then was like, no, I'm going to go to the spaceship later on. But uh, I'm giving him benefit of the doubt. (laughs) I think he redeemed himself regardless of his, his cowardice idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is in character for him. He's kind of a a doofus who doesn't really fit in anywhere and he's not sure of himself. So his lack of confidence would, would do that. But he, he does redeem himself. He's like, I am a bounty hunter. Pew, 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 pew action movie and then the ship crashes and we think he's dead and at that moment ug looks up and turns into charlie uh, as a homage to him and town's safe everyone's friends um we get on the bus the sheriff tells the boy to kiss the girl the boy kisses the girl uh the bounty hunter gets picked up by a spaceship um charlie comes and back movie. And, yeah no that didn't happen that didn't happen <laughs> no it shouldn't yeah it did happen i'm so mad that it did though because having the bounty hunter turn into charlie having charlie come back after just really weakens the blow i feel like if you left charlie dead and i know they have to bring him back for all the movies because he's in everything that's quite critter related but i think charlie should have died and the bounty hunter should have been him yeah, I'm curious how they how they move forward with it because Ugg doesn't change back. Ugg stays as Charlie. Right? I mean he, he calls he is calling himself Charlie now. When Bradley says Ugg, and he goes, No, Charlie. And then Charlie does show back up. He parachuted out or whatever bullshit, right? Can you can you help me get this parachute? Can you help me get this parachute off? Never mind, no. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> like all that. Yeah, okay, fine. Whatever. You want to bring Charlie back, I get it. But like in Critters Three are we back on Earth? I haven't seen it. So are we back on Earth? Is it Charlie or is it Charlie Ugg? You know, and that's how Don Opper keeps, you know, his critters uh, credits going. I don't know, but guess what? We'll probably find out on the show eventually because Critters 3 is going to have to go on the list now. I don't think this movie stops me from wanting to watch more of the franchise. I think, if anything, I just want to keep going with the franchise and see when does it get bad? When When do these movies really turn for the worst? Because, I mean, Shudder picked them up. And they have the new binge, and it's like a TV show or whatever. So clearly, I like ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, clearly <laughs> there's a fan base for for the Krites, you know, out there. So I, I'm curious. I want to see what what comes of it. I mean, they 
Shutter needed originals and Critters was there and they, they got a little bit of a budget and they made the show and it's fun. I guess they're just there to have fun and make goofy jokes. And that's what Critters is now. It's not meant to be taken seriously. And oh boy, do, you know, does Shudder have some of the best originals uh, around? I mean, they've got a lot of great stuff that, that we've been watching lately. So, um, yeah. Anyways, I love the movie. Joe, That's my final uh, thoughts. Pigs is Shudder. Um, yeah, <laughs> no, it was, it was a good film. The, the one thing that, like I said, didn't make sense and will never make sense is how big the ball is. <laughs> uh, if, I don't know. I don't know what to say other than I give this movie a, if you want to have a fun time, just have something on in the background. This is a good film to have. Uh, warning, there are boobs. Um, but you're watching a PG-13 horror movie with blood and people getting devoured. So just kind of expect them. Uh, yeah, great, great film. Uh, I, I kind of want to, I think I did trivia, fun facts and trivia throughout this. All right, we, there are a did, couple yeah. things I want to talk about though, like with the goofs. Okay. Uh, so you know, you know, in the uh, when they're rolling around in the giant ball to the polar iceberg, or when they're rolling together in the polar iceberg, mm-hmm. you can tell that they're connected by wires. Okay. Being pulled, and <laughs> so whenever they roll, you see wires pulling them around. Gotcha. And uh, during the close-up shot, remember when we see the dead sheriff in the Easter Bunny suit? Mm-hmm. You can clearly see the zipper is up, despite the critters jumping in his crotch. Yeah, because the inside. zipper was down previously. Yeah. Yeah. Because he makes that and comment. Then, uh, he's like, that's great. We're going to give these kids a new education. My my willy hammer or something, he says, is is going to be hanging out. And he can't, like, he can't figure out how to close it back up. That it just drives yeah. me nuts. That whole setup was... Yikes! Yeah, I thought he was. I thought he was trying to pee. Honestly, who but knows? Glad to know he wasn't a wasn't just gonna pee on a church church plant. <laughs> <laughs> so when Lee is kind of transforming, also, uh, the uh, the model he turns from that the model in the hungry heifer manager. The glasses do not materialize, even though the restaurant manager is wearing the glasses. Uh, like. That's kind of weird. Yeah, that's true, especially because when he turned into the Playboy model, the staple from the magazine came over with him, right? So he had yeah. the staple. Yeah, on his, she pulls on his it stomach. off. Yeah, so the fact that Takes the glasses, the continuity there wasn't really good. That's a good catch. Yeah, but I don't know. Maybe the staple was already there and she just took it off, but who can tell? Otherwise, I give this movie a. Watch it. Why not? Have fun. Put it on. Good film. You can't stream it anywhere for free right now. Uh, to my knowledge, I, I bought the movie for like six bucks off Amazon, but good flick. I rented so, it Curtis, from Amazon as well. Three bucks. I, I'll probably watch this again. I probably will. Like it, it not because I, I love this film. and I, 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 It's nostalgia kind of for me, but it's also like, I want something on in the background. I don't really mind this movie. Why not just have it on at a party? Yeah, I think I'm going to get the Blu-ray collection, the Critters uh, franchise collection off of uh, like Amazon or, or Shout Factory if they have some cool bonus features for it. If not, I'll just get the regular one off Amazon. But I want to get, if I buy Critters, I'm going to buy like the set. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one piece buy. That'll be, that'll bug me. You know my head. You know how I work. If there's a series, I'm just going to buy the whole series because I'll probably end up watching them all. Might as well just buy them all. Well, from there, let's talk about what we've been doing lately. Curtis. Let's do it. I want to hear about your life. Dude, quarantine. We're still, quarantine. We're still doing quarantine. And um, let's see. I'm going to get some numbers here for you. So during quarantine, I have actually been um, setting up my Plex server for all my streamable media um, because I don't own everything that I have on uh, digital. But I have like over 155 total titles that I've had 
I don't know, acquired over the years, buying it uh, from different sites. Um, I would say like 80% of those titles are horror films. So I've been setting up a Plex server so that way I can watch them anywhere I'm at, anywhere in my house. Plex is awesome. Check it out. We're not sponsored. This is not an ad, but Plex is really nice. Um, I don't think Plex sponsors anyone. No, nah, probably not. But no. <laughs> something I watched that I just, I mean, I can pick you know anything out of this list, but something that I watched I absolutely loved that I think is underrated and doesn't get enough conversation about it is Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Um, Leslie have Vernon. you seen this film? I've never heard of it. Holy shit. Uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you can check it on there uh, right now. It's currently up. Uh, I think during like this, you know, fall season, Halloween, spooky season, they've added a lot more Halloween films, uh, horror related films, I should say, that they haven't had in a while. So um, I would check it out. I, I definitely think we should do an episode on it, but it's, um, I don't know, it's it's pretty, pretty fresh when it comes to horror and how it does it. And uh, the story is basically you follow these news reporters um, or a reporter, uh, you follow Leslie Vernon, who's like the next Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees. Um, and he even drops, you know, those names specifically in the, in the film. And he explains how, um, one of those types of killers, how they work, how they set it up, what they're looking for, the virgin, the friends, uh, the easy kids to pick off, to pad your numbers, right? Like he breaks it down. It's so fourth wall breaking, um, it is it is absolutely amazing and not enough people know about this movie so i definitely want to give it a shout out and uh you know clark you should check it out too i know you'll love it um and maybe we can do an episode Big on word. it here soon <laughs> no i'll love it you know me man <laughs> i know you and i and i i think i think you'll love it for sure yeah uh well, what have you I, been I doing like... lately i went to san diego for a week and it was great we went to uh, we went to lions, tigers, and bears, which is a na na nature preserve. This, this is where uh, kind of my friend wanted to go to, so we went there. We saw a bunch of rescued lions, tigers, bears, and other cats. Oh um, my! Uh, well, mostly cats and just like a couple bears here and there. But they are. It was a non nonprofit organization. They they take money. They take care of animals that were abused or owned by exotic animal owners and they just have a forever home for them and we went there and just saw them it was a little depressing but uh, if any of you want to do donate to a worthy cause i think them taking care of these animals and feeding them or volunteering doing work with them i would recommend it it's uh i don't know any of the ethics behind the owners or anything like that but these animals deserve to be taken care of and uh, look into lions, tigers, and bears, and if you'd like to donate, please do so. Otherwise, you know, man, we just went ocean kayaking, hung out by the beach, and just had a good time. Dude, that's awesome. It sounds like you had a really great getaway. We're currently looking good. to uh, get away as well. Get away from the heat a little bit, <laughs> get out of the house, you know, get an Airbnb, maybe a cabin or something up north, and get to some cooler weather, so... Um, there's, there's plenty to do outdoors, low risk. Mm -hmm. If you feel uncomfortable and want to wear a mask all the time, feel free to do so. Nobody will judge you. If they do, they're not cool. Um, but yeah, otherwise, man, I think that's, that's it for the show. Otherwise, other than just us plugging our social media, which is on Instagram and tw Twitter this is the number two guys, horror pod. Uh, check us out again. That is the number two horror guy, <laughs> two guys, horror pod. And if you want to reach out to us on Gmail, the email address is two guys and some horror at gmail.com. That is all spelled out, two guys and some horror, T W O. And also, we have all of our episodes are now up on YouTube mostly. I see that Curtis has been very diligent in getting all that pushed up. And good, good on us. Like, by the subscribe. time, yeah, by the time <laughs> this episode drops, all it'll be all up on youtube every single episode yeah no it's 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 all there like uh, you, we just we're up to date now and that's great uh, so so great work man i appreciate that and i ring that bell subscribe leave a comment tell us how much you love curtis's lovely voice and, and if just, you know what here's a here's a call out so um just just to this is something i just came up with but mm -hmm. here, here's what i want to see if we can do so there's two episodes specifically episode 24 
the John Carpenter Vampires episode, and episode 40, uh, Scream. Both of those feature a guest by the name of Mimic the Idiot. If, if everybody who listens to our show, if you could go to YouTube and drop a like on that video and maybe come up with one reason why they think Mimic is a great guest, please do it. He dropped two comments on his videos saying, wow, the guest on this one really stunk, and then can't believe this guest oh, got invited back. I I'm so mad at how, how negative he is on himself. And Mimic, if you're listening to this episode, you got to fucking stop that. He, you're a he great knows. guy and people like you. He knows. He likes uh, – part of his <laughs> his shtick is self-deprecation. But I, what I want to do is let's rival that, okay, fans? Let's let's do something a little different. Let's try and go out there and, and you know, like his videos, tell him how awesome he is, and let's see if we can counteract his negativity with insane amounts of positivity. Okay, that's my call out. That's my one ask of all of you listeners out there. Um, and, and, you know, to Clark's point, like, thank you guys so much for listening to us. Um, I, I just, I can't believe we've been doing this for, you know, over a year now. Um, and, you know, it, it is just a passion project. I love horror movies. I watch horror movies all day, every day. Um, and the fact that I get to talk about them with Clark and then share that with all of you is just something that uh, I, I really enjoy doing every each and every yeah. week. So thank you, Clark, for doing this with me, and thank, thank you, listeners, for checking us out. Thank you for being Curtis. And everyone else, love you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.